Hello everyone, my name is Viraj and today we'll be looking at the sixth problem from the CP31 sheet by TLE eliminators under the thousand rated questions. Let's go. So I'll move on to my sheet over here, ticked off thousand and the sixth problem, ski resort. Dima is a math teacher at school. He has, or was sorry, sent on a vacation for N days for his good work. Dima has long dreamed of going to a ski resort, so he wants to allocate several consecutive days to go skiing. Since the vacation requires careful preparation, he will go for at least K days. You are given an array A containing the weather forecast at the report. On the i day, the temperature will be AI degrees. Dima was born in Siberia, so he can go to vacation only if temperature does not rise above Q degrees throughout the vacation. Unfortunately, Dima was so absorbed in abstract algebra that he forgot how to count. He needs you to help him and count the number of ways to choose vacation dates at the resort. Okay, so nice vacation story that they have made. Let's generalize this problem quickly. They will say that there is given an N array, N sized array. Okay, this has the numbers A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A6, so on till N. Now, what does every number tell you? There is a limit that is given that is Q. Now, every number which is greater than Q, let's say AI is greater than Q. This means that ith day is a day on which you cannot be on vacation because temperature is more, it's given in the story, that is something you don't want. But if the temperature is rather less than equal to Q, then you know this is a day I can be on vacation. So this part should be clear. Some days, everybody has their temperature, every day has their temperature. Greater than Q is a day I don't want, less than equal to Q is a day I want. Now there is one more given variable that is called K. K means that, let's say you figure out which days you could have actually gone on vacation. Let's say this day, this day, this day, this day I can go on vacation, this day I can go on vacation, this day I can go on vacation. For example, let's just say. So if I tell you that K for example is two, that means how many ways can you select a sub array which has greater than equal to two size, which has all the days as a day where it is possible to be on vacation. Meaning in this case, if let's say K is two, Let's just focus right now till this much portion. The rest portion is like generalized. If you just talk about these four days. So how many ways can I pick up from these four days? If let's say this is like A1, A2, A3, A4, just for this much portion. You can pick up A1, A2. Continuously, this is sub array, at least two size. Yes, this is greater than equal to two size. You can pick up this A2, A3. You can pick up A3, A4. You can pick up A1, A2, A3. You can pick up A2, A3, A4. And you can also pick up A1, A2, A3, A4. How many ways can you see over here? Six ways. So just for this much portion, if you have considered, let's say the days were only four days, let's say A, A1 to A4, then I would have answered six back for K2, saying that if these four days are some days which I can actually go on a vacation, considering that every value was less than equal to Q, then I had six different ways to select greater than equal to two sized sub arrays out of them, which had continuously a day or continuously all days on which vacation was possible. All right, this part should be clear. Let us move on and see one of the test cases. And I think this is going to be much more easy. Let's pick up the last case, 6, 1, 3. Okay, so this is 6, 1, and 3. And then you have 0, 3, negative 2, 5. 0, 3, negative 2, 5. And then you have negative 4, negative 4. Okay, now in this case, this is n. This is actually k first. I think they have given you k first. Yeah, k is given first. And then this is q. So first of all, let's take off the days which has less than equal to three temperature. This has, this has, this has, this has, and this has, correct? Now, if I try to ask you if K is one, that means you're trying to figure out sub arrays where everything was ticked off and it has a size greater than or equal to one. So let's consider one size first. One, two, three, four, five. Let's talk about two size. One, two, three. And let's talk about three size. This is like a whole one from here to here, one. And then I think you cannot create it over here. And then four size and all that is zero. Basically, you cannot create a four size array. I think it's clearly visible. Sum this up, five plus three plus one, this comes out as nine. That means you have nine ways to select a sub array, which has greater than equal to one size and everything there is a tick, which means all days are something you can go on vacation. I hope this test case is clear. Pause the video, run your idea on other cases also, all these top six cases, and I think you will understand the 
mean ways counting is coming as 601001 how and when is that coming okay let's now begin with the time complexity in this problem we understood the cases and everything what is expected time limit is given as 1 second so that is like test is allowing you 10 raised to 8 order now n is given in 10 raised to 5 order k and or k is also given in 10 raised to 5 order and q value is pretty large 10 power 9 10 power 9 but even before that there is this test case variable which is in 10 power 4 order but there is actually a statement over here that says sum of all n values over test cases does not exceed 2 into 10 raised to 5 order this means i don't need to bother myself again with these test cases i can simply say that if one test is allowing me 10 raised to 8 operations then i'm practically looking for n if let's say is like a 10 power 5 order and i just bother myself with 10 power 5 order only let's say just n that i'm talking about size of array i can create like a o of n solution n log n solution also is fine n square root solution is also fine n square root n solution is also fine but if you go n square that's a problem come down up to a constant limit all of this is fine so solutions like this are promoted if you create a linear solution n log n solution square root solution that's fine but don't create something that is squared up don't do that because you will actually end up with a tle and this is expected time complexity discussion very very important because now i have an idea not going to work with brute solutions at all okay somehow you need to figure out the ways in a very smart manner let's begin with our idea now the first thing as i was discussing the cases also must come to your mind that are you actually concerned with the temperature of that day as a value or rather as a limit you are more concerned with the limit meaning if right now i have the values given as a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 so until an i really don't want to work with the value rather i simply just want to work with whether a1 was less than equal to q yes i'll work with that if it's greater than q i will not work with that so can you say my first clever idea can be just to make my life easier convert all these values to something like a 0 1 as in if let's say a1 is 0 that means a1 was greater than q if let's say a2 is 1 a2 is lesser than equal to 2 q then let's say this is 1 let's say this is 0 let's say this is 1 this is 1 this is 1 so on let's say this is 0 i can convert every number ai to either a 0 or a 1 on basis of this condition whether ai was greater than q or ai was less than equal to q now this is helpful because now this just made my life easy right i just want to bother myself with ones and zeros anymore and now the question has changed a little bit see if you can figure out this question now the question has now changed to something like this that find the ways of selecting sub arrays of all ones which have greater than equal to k size this is now the left problem and this is like a very classical problem which we want to solve now this can be solved with a very simple technique that we called count and reset technique what does this mean let's say after modifying the array it looks something like this let's say 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 0 1 0 something like this and let's say i say k is equal to 3 now what you can do is you can try to run a pointer from the left hand side and you can start counting how many ones come continuously this is called counting process so i'll be like let's say there is a c counter which is initially zero now you land up at a one oh this becomes one land up at a one again this becomes two land up at a one this becomes three now after this when you land up next index this is a zero which means you want to reset because this means that up till this position you encountered c number of ones after this you have now moved to a zero so this counter will go back to zero this is the reset process that i was saying but the technique is since we counted a continuous segment of ones now we can work on it right for a continuous segment of ones can you not try to find the answer that from this particular segment that i just calculated how many greater than equal to k size k size sub arrays that i can create is there and this is the idea you start counting you go from left you increment 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 and wherever you change before you reset something like you can say before i reset before i reset calculate ways for 
that segment. This means that I would be getting answers from each and every segment over here. I'll say that I'll get the answer from this segment of ones, this segment of ones, this segment of ones, and this segment of ones. Let's say this is W1. Let's say this is W2. Let's say this is W3. Let's say this is W4. If I add all of them, then don't you think this is going to be my main answer? This is the final answer. The total number of ways of selecting greater than or equal to k size subarrays overall, which had ones in continuous manner. And this is actually the idea, which means from here onward, I do want to do an counting approach and a reset approach, but I first of all need to figure out this logic. When I actually want to reset, what algorithm helps you get this answer that is greater than or equal to k size subarrays ways that you want. How to do this? Now there is of course a brute idea in this. Maybe you just try to create KSI sub arrays and that will work with you. But that is exactly not what we want. We just discussed in expert time complexity. N square is not possible. You want something linear or in log max, but over here, I'll give you a smart trick. Let's take an example. Let's say that the one sized continent segment that you found looks something like this. One, 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 one. You found six ones continuously, for example. And let's say K was three. Now you want to check for a size greater than or equal to three. So let's begin with three. How many subarrays can you create of three size? One, two, three, four. So you'll be like, okay, this is four. Now, how many can you create for four? One, two, three. So you'll be like, okay, this is three. How many for five? Of course, no wonder. Two. How many for six? Only one. Now, what is the sum that you actually need? You need one plus two, plus three, plus four. If I generalize this, basically you need the sum for one, plus two, plus three, plus so on. If the count of this overall segment is, for example, C equals to six, you basically want C minus K plus one. Is this right? Six minus three plus one. What does it give you? Four. And did you not want this? You wanted this. So now tell me, I think this is now very, very easy maths, beginner friendly maths. How do I get the sum of numbers from one to some particular value, like let's say n? This is the sum of the first n natural numbers, which can be written as n into n plus one by two, where n's value is actually c minus k plus one, C is the segment size that you just created or just found, counted, what do you call this? And K was a fixed value. So this is how you basically end up getting ways or you can say ways for this particular segment, WC. And you do this for all segments and you get the correct ways accumulated as an answer. All right, so I hope this approach makes sense. What we'll do is let's look at one of the cases and we'll see how does this work out. Let's talk about the first case, okay? Three, one. So you have three, one, 15. And I think then you have negative five, zero, negative 10. So first I'll convert this array. This is Q, by the way. So how many are less than equal to Q? One, one, one. Now the array has been modified. K is one. That means greater than equal to one size. So let's count and reset. Counter becomes from zero, now one, now two, now finally three. Okay. And now you have ended the array. So basically you want that after you've ended, use this counter before you reset. Of course, there's no incense over here to reset again because you've ended the array. But anyways, just for the algorithm purpose, you will say that, okay, C turns out to be three. So C minus K plus one turns out what? Three minus one plus one, this turns out to be three. So I want sum of numbers from one to three. This becomes three into four by two, which is six. This is actually the answer. Let's go back. Yes, six was the answer. All right. So very, very fun problem and very easy. Just combines small, small concepts that we normally see in daily life and some of natural numbers, counting recent technique. This should be very clear by a simple idea and the simple problem up to this level, of course. Okay. So let's look at the code part now. As I explained, as they have said, the pseudo structure, take the input of T, T is there, then NKQ, then the array. And as soon as I take the input of the array, I've just modified it directly because I don't want any extra space. So if AI is inputted and it's greater than Q, I modify it with zero or a one. So this is a ternary operator. If this is true, I go to zero. If this is not, I go to one. Now I have count of number of ways, zero, this is the counter and ways that is the answer. Let's run a loop. 
If AI is one, I know I'm following a segment. So increase by one. Else, now before I reset, that is this line, before I reset back to zero, I want to see the number of ways. So for that, of course, first of all, the count of one should be greater than equal to K, right? If it is like case, for example, three, and the count of that segment is only two, then will you be able to come up with any ways? Not possible. You want at least K. So I'll say count of ones is greater than equal to K. If that is right, then let's get this difference or that N, there is count of ones minus K plus one, and then difference into difference plus one or N into N plus one by two gets added onto ways. Once you end this loop, you do this once more. For an example, I showed you over here also that if you end the array and there is still some C that is there with you, you might want to check once more. If it's greater than or equal to K, same logic. Like literally I've copy pasted the lines. And this gives you the overall base, print it, and that's your answer. Now, what is your time complexity? N order to take the input. This is roughly N order. And everything inside this is pretty much constant. All of this calculation is constant. So I know I have actually come up with a very neat solution that is linear, O of N, which means this is like uh, O of two into, 10 raised to 5 order. 2 into 10 raised to 5 order. And what about space? Space is also in this order only for the extra, not extra, sorry, just the input array that you have. All right. So that is all that is there in this problem. I hope you like the video. Thank you for watching. <laughs>